the reflection. You wouldn't, I suppose, have about your person anywhere. Well, I The would. odd would you? I could just manage one, I think. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Poor little Cleopatra Drain will never seem the same again. One night, some little time ago, while Ma was at a picture show, thinking she might immerse herself, she took it in bath from, from the shelf, and then removing her attire, she bathed before the kitchen fire. Cleanly creature. Her future might have held some hope had she not trodden on the soap. <laughs> Looking like nature in the raw, she skidded on the kitchen floor, then finished up this flight so strange by sitting on the kitchen range. <laughs> the red hot stove, I hate to say, was trademarked in the usual way. <laughs> Poor Cleo, gazing in the glass, discovered what had come to pass. <laughs> For where she sat, the poor girl saw, branded the word Excelsior. <laughs> well, war broke out, and like shot, her patriotism burnt red hot. She went and joined the ATS, who asked her, would she please undress? The commandant exclaimed, come, come. What is that word you have there, chum? <laughs> a code word, unless I'm a chump, that means an ammunition dump. We'll have to blot it out, I guess, and find another one unless... You want to be shot as a spy, and no one wants to see you die. So they called in a local painter chap who altered Cleopatra's map and substituted, what a farce, the bold words, please keep off the grass. <laughs> <laughs> That's the big laugh at the end of that one, and I wish I were dead. <laughs> <laughs> now, thank you, Cyril. Thank you. Now, in the course of... This is the first of two programmes which we are dedicating to vintage radio, and uh, not indeed that any of our, our friends here look particularly vintage, all very hale and, and hearty, and I'll be talking to the one steady, steady Bernie. I'll be to if Bernie lasts, I'll be talking to him and the people that I haven't spoken to in part two. But Bob, 